Welcome to this uh, second theme in the 2db604 software architecture course. Uh, this theme is all about uh, architecture requirements. First one, the first lecture is a general lecture introducing what uh, architecture requirements uh, are. And, and then in a second lecture, we look more uh, into a uh, specification technique for architecture requirements uh, introduced and promoted in the book, which is called Quality Attribute Scenarios. Uh, this first lecture focuses on architecture requirements. So uh, the most important question when developing a system is what to develop. You have to understand this in order to do uh, anything with your project that at the end will make your customers happy. So what is an architecture requirement? What is it that makes it unique and why is it important that you are able to uh, pick out an architecture requirement from a non-architectural requirement? In this lecture, we will try to give you a better understanding of where to find, what to look for, uh, and also how to, to uh, uh, avoid, uh, well, mistakes made by, well, missing architectural requirements. The uh, focus will be uh, on fairly general level. However, at the end, we will look more into a detailed example uh, on software re uh, architecture requirements for security. So... The important task for, for software architects uh, is to, or to uh, um, make the strategic decisions that are important for, for the, a large part or the whole software system. These strategic decisions, well, we can illustrate it here with a bucket full of them. Well, the most important task at, at the in any project is of course to identify these decisions so that you know that you make the right decisions you don't forget about important decisions so where should you start uh, looking for for these decisions and and how do you recognize them well you remember this from from the one of the uh, lectures in the introduction package uh, the standard, uh, the ISO 42010, they uh, focus on stakeholders, concerns, and views. And stakeholders and their concerns are critical for identifying architecture requirements. The stakeholder has a or many concerns with respect to the system. And it's among these concerns that you will find the requirements. What's important is that, that architecture is not a phase that happens at the beginning of a project, even though maybe you make a majority or, or the you take a majority of these decisions at, at the early phases in a project. These concerns may arise at any point throughout a project. So it doesn't mean that well, just because you have an implementation or at least started on the implementation that you don't have to make any architectural decisions. These design uh, choices, these design uh, processes must be considered throughout the entire life cycle actually uh, for a software system. So the concerns is the entry point for us to identify architecture significant requirements or RSRs, A ASRs, sorry. Uh, an ASR always leads up to a architectural significant decision. So if you have a requirement that affects a large part of the system, well, then you have to make a decision that affects a large part of the system and among the concerns we, we uh, uh, had a look at uh, in the previous package well there was this 
long list of various uh, concerns. So you can see that it spans the range from business goals and strategies, which is high level, uh, not necessarily connected to, to the actual development. It could be something that is uh, decided uh, in a boardroom somewhere far from the development team. There is functionality. There are also more specific concerns like cost and schedule, uh, qualities connected to the software system itself, like in information insur assurance, etc. But it's also very low level concerns like state changes, we want to deadlock freeness, etc. So all these are concerns that may result in an architectural requirement, but not necessarily. So remember that just because you find a concern, it doesn't mean that it has global impact. But these are some of the entry points that you can look for, because these are very good candidates for architecturally significant requirements. Uh, in order to, to distinguish or categorize the, the concerns, uh, there are a couple of, of uh, uh, classifications. Uh, one is um, when you can find out if you meet a requirement or not and and the statically dynamically dimension is is important because uh, as you remember architectural decisions are typically made uh, on a high level uh, not necessarily having any implementation of a system whatsoever and it means that you have to rely on on, on uh, other techniques and traditional testing where you execute the system uh, so it means that, that some of the uh, uh, concerns like uh, portability, modifiability, integrability, etc., they you can actually analyze for on, on uh, analyze statically. That is that you can uh, check representations of the system uh, to figure out if it's modifiable or not. However, Dynamically uh, discernible concerns oftentimes require that you execute some kind of model or the system itself. When you uh, specify architecture requirements, uh, you involve the stakeholders in the process because they know what they want. At least they mostly do have some idea about what they want. But the architect, in this case, a domain architect who, is, uh, who has uh, specialized in, in a uh, specific area, well, they know what concern the stakeholders may have that they don't know. So one example here is a, a security domain architect he or she is, is uh, very familiar to, to uh, problems that are concerned with security. And even though a stakeholder doesn't have a clue, the domain architect can present architectural significant requirements in a way that the stakeholders can say yes or no or yeah, we need something like that, or yes, that sounds like a great idea. And, and by using these techniques, the domain architect can, can elicit the requirements uh, from the stakeholders without requiring that the stakeholders are on the same knowledge level as the domain architect. So domain architects are extremely important in this uh, work because we need experts. If we are expected to, to uh, understand all the important concerns uh, that may affect or 
not uh, a system or not? Well, the expertise is critical because many of these concerns are so complex areas that it it's a full-time job just to keep up with the development. And as an architect, you must be able to identify potential problems during uh, uh, the, uh, the process where you specify architectural requirements to help and guide stakeholders. But you must also be able to, to participate in the, in the design. So you need some familiarity with the, the available uh, solutions at the architectural level. So we need the experts. And actually, uh, the more experts we have, well, the better. So architectural significant requirements, they, they have a couple of properties that are uh, similar to, to uh, uh, quality requirements that, that you maybe are a little bit more familiar to. Uh, obvious, they are uh, uh, on, on the architectural level, so, so they are cross-cutting, they are uh, cross-cutting the, the system or, well, at least a large por uh, portion of the system. Uh, most functionality has a location. You can pinpoint that a, a component or two and say, here is the functionality for this or that. However, qualities are much more uh, challenging to, to, to pinpoint and say that this is the component responsible for this or that. These qualities are also competing that is that they are competing for resources so so uh, at some point you have to balance uh, the the architecture significant requirements so that you get a a good enough uh, situation where where you you uh, achieve a good enough performance and a good enough security combined with the the required functionality of course so so uh, this is also uh, challenging for, for, for uh, you as, a, as an architect. Uh, qualities are also continuous. If you look at the function, a function is either there or it's not. Uh, whereas uh, quality is more on a, it is on a sliding scale. So a system is not fast or slow. It's on the continuum between slow and fast. So, so, and this is true for, for uh, uh, almost all architecture significant requirements that, that uh, it's not just a binary uh, type, of, type of requirement on and off. It's, it's, it's much more complex. So the first step uh, in, in uh, specifying your architecture significant requirements is of course the identification. And as mentioned in, in one of the previous slides, uh, make use of the domain experts or, or if you are not an expert in a specific domain, check that domain because often you can find useful documentation that can be turned into questions. So ask the users, ask the right questions, uh, approach the identification systematically because you don't want to miss something important. Uh, and if you miss something important, well, it's never too late, but it typically means that you have to invest much, much more time. When you have identified your uh, uh, candidate requirements, well, you should go through the candidates, analyze them, see if you can uh, combine them, see if you can, can uh, collapse or, or if something is, is too complex, you can split them. Uh, make an exhaustive analysis, go through each and every one of them, uh, then prioritize them and maybe already at this point you can make trade-offs, you can, you can trade uh, some requirement for another. Finally, well, it's time to specify them. And, and so with all specifications, you should strive for specifications that are understandable. So, so not a layman level 
of understandability, but they should be understandable by the stakeholder. So, so sometimes you can communicate it at a high level just to present it to a stakeholder who doesn't have that knowledge uh, level uh, required to understand a more uh, precise or low level specification. And always make sure that your requirements are verifiable or testable so, so that there is an answer if you ask the question, does the system, does my architecture deal with this requirement on a level where we are satisfied? So uh, let's just briefly look at an example. And, and what you see here is, is a security example. And there are a lot of possible security requirements there you can you can find a long list of of security requirements uh, and if you look at them well one could be ensure that confidential communications and data are kept private this is a common security requirement that that if you have data in your system and this system uh, communicates well, then you don't want anyone else to, to be able to, to, to read that uh, uh, data. And if this is an example of an architecture significant requirement or not, well, that depends a little bit on the uh, system at hand because this can be a requirement that is internal to a component, but more likely it's something that affects the system as a whole. So you have parts in the system that communicates and you have to make sure that the data is kept private and the communication confidential. So each and every one of these uh, statements, they belong to some class of security requirements. And uh, there are identif identification requirements, authentication, author authorization, immunity, integrity. And integrity is, is uh, well, where you find the, the uh, uh, ensure the confidential uh, uh, communications and data are kept private requirement. So this is an example of integrity requirement. So what we've done here is that, well, we have used a catalog of security requirements. And, and in this simple example, we actually scanned that list and we found some requirements that we believe suit our system. So based on knowledge, we identified some, some uh, possible requirements we can continue and we can analyze them and we can also at the end of course specify them in more detail than what you see here on the slide so if we go for an integrity requirements there are a number of examples uh, what is important here you see the guidelines at the end you should not specify integrity requirements in terms of of what architecture mechanism you do. For instance, you should not specify, ensure that confidential com communications and data are kept private using cryptography. Don't, don't write the requirement at that level. Avoid that. Avoid implementation. That is, this is like uh, requirement specification 101. Stay away from the how requirements is about what and what was all where we started architectural requirements that's trying the process of trying to to identify analyze and specify the architecturally significant requirements you probably find most of them 
among the concerns that our stakeholders have, but uh, don't forget that some of the architectural requirements may be your own. So that was the first lecture in this second theme. Next lecture is on quality attribute scenarios.